What's up, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Hope all you're having a great day so far. It is really a beautiful damn day today. Like today, the sun is just booming. It's not cold. It's not hot. It's like a good spring type of day. You know what I mean? I'm loving it. Um, So getting into this episode of GH, I had a feeling that it wasn't Jake doing this. I, I, I just knew it couldn't have been him. I was hoping it couldn't have been him. And we pretty much got the proof today that it's not him. Um, so what he was afraid of Liz finding out was, um, he was at the library. So if they checked the logs or whatever, he logged in at their computer. Apparently he's been in correspondence with Elizabeth's parents and they reached out to him apparently after Jason died and they want to get to know him. I don't trust it. I don't trust it. Is it really them? Like, does he have proof that it's them? Because it could be anybody that he's corresponding with. I, I don't trust that. But if it is them, I don't blame Elizabeth for being upset because why now? You know what I'm saying? After all these years, why would you want to get to know your grandson now? And you do have two other grandchildren. So why not hop on a plane and come back to Port Charles or something? You know what I mean? Like, you reach out to your whole family. Why specifically Jake? You know what I'm saying? Why not Cameron? You know, why not reach out to Elizabeth? You know, call her or something. Why not do that? Or email her or something. You know what I mean? Why specifically Jake and why specifically now? It just doesn't add up. It doesn't it doesn't track. So if this is really her parents, my thing is I, I would be just as pissed if I was Elizabeth. I would be just as upset because why reach out to my son behind my back? Why not come at me directly and reach out to me, your child? You know what I'm saying? But I'm glad that Elizabeth didn't take that out on Jake. You know, she she wasn't upset with him um, and she reassured him of that. But now, since they know it's not Jake, they're back at square one. Like, who the hell is doing this? And it could be anybody at this point. Like, we don't know. Um, They need to figure it out. I say they need to put like, you know, one of them ring cameras on the door on the doorbell. They need to put one of those up. I think it's at that point now where Elizabeth needs to start putting cameras up in the house, around the house. She needs to start putting cameras up. Get some cameras on the side of her vehicle or something like something. You need proof. You know what I'm saying? Like you need some type of proof of who the hell is doing this at this moment because this is just insane. Um, It's just right back at square one. So anyway, moving on from that. Um. Ryan was sitting there eavesdropping on um, Esme and Spencer's conversation or whatever. Esme was pissed throughout this entire conversation with Spencer because Spencer just kept going on and on about Trina. Oh, Trina did. She didn't do it. Oh, I met Trina at the uh, cemetery or whatever. She covered for me. Esme was losing her shit every time he mentioned that girl. Every time. She just kept blowing a gasket, just getting attitudes every time he would bring that girl up. And... She tried to gain sympathy from Spencer because everything that she tried to bring up to him, like the vow renewal for Ava and Nicholas, he was not interested. He wasn't thinking about that. He kept talking to her about the sex tape. Um, so she got his mind off of it by bringing up the bruise on her arm. Told my old Carly, grab me. Everybody in this town hates me. Everybody hates your ass because of what you're doing. Like Spencer should be smarter than this. He should know if everybody in that town d dislikes you, there's a reason. Why would Carly, of all people, dislike Esme for no reason? Obviously, she has a reason to, to like you. Like, a lot of people in that town don't like you. There's a reason for that. Um, she trying to, I knew she was going to try to blame Carly for that bruise. I knew it. I knew she would. Um, and if you look at the bruise, I'm like, obviously, you could tell it's an old, older bruise. You know what I'm saying? And we all know how it got there because Ryan grabbed her ass up, as he should. <laughs> Now, mind you, I don't condone no domestic violence or nothing. It's just me joking. But, yeah, like, she need a beat down or something. Because this girl is, like, really getting on my nerves. Um, She really wants Spencer to stop covering for Trina or whatever. And Spencer was, like, putty in her hand. Told my, oh, when I get out of here, I'm going to be there for you. I'm like, Spencer, grow a backbone, grow a set of testicles, and dump this girl. You know what I'm saying? Like, get rid of her. Um... The, like he really needs to dump her i love the scene though with portia and trina because everything portia said all the advice that portia had gave trina is the same type of advice i would have gave trina 
get rid of Spencer at this point. You know, I don't get me wrong. I like the chemistry between them, but I agree with Portia. This situation is super messy. It's super messy. Um, and it's getting messier by the minute. And Trina do not need that because I do agree with Portia. Spencer and Esme are toxic as hell. And when Portia was telling Trina all of this, Trina had that look on her face like she didn't want to let go of Spencer for some reason. Like she couldn't walk away from this. And I get it. She like him because she sees a different side of him that other people may not see, you know, that her mom has not seen. So I think that's that pull that keeps her coming back to him because she feels a connection to him. Be that as it may, like I said, she need to kind of walk away because this situation is it's not good. You know, it's going to drag her down. You know, she's just now starting college. She don't need this kind of stress. And that's all Esme and Spencer are bringing to the table right now to her stress. She need to think twice and listen to her mother about this and walk away. You know what I'm saying? Like, let them do their little toxic shit and you sit over here and, you know, worry about school and your education. Like, you're too young to be this serious and getting all, all this mess, all this mischief, because that's all that's being caused right now. Um, You know, Trina was trying to go to bat for Spencer or whatever, but Portia wasn't trying to hear it. She said, listen, you need to keep your ass away from both of them. And I agree with Mama Portia. I do. Um, so anyway, Jocelyn was supposed to be having a little study, you know, session with some boy at her school named Adam. So for those that don't know, the, the boy who was playing Adam, his, that's Joshua Bernard. That's Maurice Bernard's son that was playing the character. And I felt like he did a good job. He really did. I felt like Joshua did a really good job. He came off very sleazy, um, trying to make a pass at Jocelyn and stuff. Told my, oh, ever since I saw you naked, I feel like we got, I got chemistry or whatever. I was so glad when Jocelyn told him to get the hell out of here. And he sitting here talking about, well, it's a public place. She was like, I could beat your ass. <laughs> she was like, I could punch you in your face. And I bet you he got up that quick, too, and got the hell up out of there. I feel bad for Jocelyn. You know, I really do. I feel bad for her because she's getting messages from boys on the campus, basically trying to hit her up to have sex with her, try to sleep with her. I feel bad for her because nobody should have to go through that. You know what I'm saying? Like, dudes hitting you up just for sex and stuff. Like, you some whore. Like, yeah, like, that's how they treating her right now. Like, she's some prostitute or something. Like, she's some quick piece of ass. You know what I'm saying? Like, somebody got to do something about this. Like, that girl is talking about switching schools, transferring. And I'm glad Cameron told her no. He was like, listen, don't do that. Because you're giving them power. And I do agree. She's giving them power. She's letting them win. Running away is not going to solve your problem. Yeah, it's hard every day to face stuff like this, but you have to. You got to show them that you're strong. You know what I'm saying? You're you're not going to fold. Um, And I'm glad that Cameron's going to stick by her. You know what I'm saying? Because at one moment, they were talking about maybe they should separate, you know, in public. Like, they shouldn't be around each other in public because they feel like when they're in public, it brings more attention to them. And I'm glad that they decided to face this together because they need to. And, you know, Carly told Cameron, go be with Jocelyn, go be by her side. She needs, you know, friends. And I really wish that Cameron and Joss would reach out to Trina, you know, or she reaches out to them. I feel like they should reach out to her because she didn't do this. And if they know her like they say they know her, then they should know that this is not in her character Um, to do something like this. So anyway, moving on from that, um, I like the scene with Carly and Drew. I really did. You know, I love the scenes with them. They, the chemistry is, I think, very good between Carly and Drew. My thing is, I don't want them to be a couple. I don't. But when I was looking at them together, I was like, listen, the first thought that popped into my head, Carly, get you a ladder. OK, set it up, set the ladder up. And climb that tree known as Drew. Just go ahead and climb it. You ain't got to be his woman or nothing like that. But climb the tree. Sit on a branch. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> go ahead and go ahead and sit on one of his, you know, on his branch. And y'all do the do. You know what I'm saying? I listen, I, I just feel so much sexual chemistry between them. It's like just go ahead and do it. You know? I can understand why they stopped themselves from doing it before at the quarter main um boathouse. You know, because they didn't want to blur the lines in their friendship, but just do it one good time. Just mm, put on some Marvin Gaye, get the candles lit, and just go ahead and turn off the lights and light a candle. Yeah. <laughs> just go ahead. One good time. Get it out your system. 
I just feel it like I, I was like, just go ahead. Um, Drew, that you know, I'm glad Drew is there for Carly. You know what I'm saying? Because she do need a, another friend since Jason ain't around. I would love to see her interact more with Spinelli though, because you know Spinelli's a good listener too. You know what I'm saying? He's a little quirky, but you know. <laughs> he could be a bit much but you know he'll listen and he'll give some advice but you know i like that drew's there for her um but i do agree with carly though this whole victor nonsense like drew going after victor he need to be careful <laughs> he do because victor will stop at nothing to take him down you know what i'm saying like one way or the other victor's either going to try to control him and if he can't do it he's going to try to kill him like, he came up with some flimsy excuse to try to meet up with Drew, talking about, well, my son is CEO of VLQ. What the hell that got to do with you? Tell him I want to talk to you about your voting shares. What the hell that got to do with you, sir? ELQ ain't got nothing to do with you, Victor. Yeah, your son, your alleged son, is CEO. And I say alleged because I still haven't seen a DNA test, so allegedly. Um, I was like, that's such a flimsy-ass excuse to get him out there. And I like how Drew took control of it because Victor wanted to meet him at the pier. And Drew said, no, no, no. We're going to meet on my turf. We're going to meet at the footbridge. I said, I know that's right. Get him where you want him. You know what I'm saying? That's smart. That's how you control the situation. You get some type of home field advantage. You know, get him to go somewhere you want him to meet. You know what I'm saying? That's smart. Um, but Victor think he got everything well in hand with that little tarot card. And he's playing right into Drew's hands, right into Sam and them playing. So let him keep thinking he winning. That's how that's part of how you draw your enemy in. Let them think they won. That's all you gotta do. Let them think they won. So anyway, I was super happy when Felicia popped up. I was happy as shit. I said somebody got to save Anna, because that man was definitely gonna kill her. Thank God, you know, Felicia popped up when she did and her and Anna got to jump on him. But that man was not trying to talk at all. He was talking like he was on a mission. He said, Listen, I'm a soldier. <laughs> he he was like <laughs> Um, they were trying to get so many answers out of him, but he was not telling them nothing. Um, you know, he was just denying it and stuff. And they found a second burner phone on him. And this fool was dedicated. Like this man took a suicide pill and died just to not have to speak. I said, oh, he must be really scared of Victor ass then. He must, like, he must be really scared because the way he was talking, you would think Victor had him brainwashed. I'm a soldier. I'm okay. <laughs> so Anna and Felicia end up calling Victor or calling the number on that on um, burner phone. And Victor was smart enough not to answer that phone. He said, no, no, because he had the deputy mayor with him, um, Eileen. And he told her to answer the phone. So Eileen answered the phone and they were Anna and Felicia were pissed because now since Victor didn't answer the phone, they had nothing to tie him to. Luke to the supposed death of Luke so now they're pretty much at square one with this trying to dig up dirt on him I'm like Victor is too smart but I'm glad Anna and Felicia are figuring that out though they're start piece by piece they're figuring things out they know now that there's a much bigger play at hand and you can see the look on Felicia's face when they realized it she looked scared like that there's something bigger there's a bigger picture and that just adds more credence to what Victor has been saying to Valentine for a while now that he needs to see the bigger picture of what's going on. All of this is adding up. Killing Luke or supposedly killing Luke. The Ice Princess. Everything that's been going down since Victor's been back. It's all a part of some grand scheme. And Felicia and Anna are starting to piece it. They're starting to figure it out. Like there's a big picture here. There's something bigger at play. And that's what scares them. Because this ain't just you know a vendetta that Victor had. It's much bigger. So that, that would scare the hell out of anybody. Because like. How do you figure it out? Like, what is he up to? Um, I knew Eileen was going to go running her mouth to Victor about what Laura told her. And I got a feeling hopefully it was a setup because I don't see Laura just blindly telling her deputy mayor all her business. You know what I'm saying? I don't see her doing it without it being some type of trap. So hopefully it is. Um, but Victor pretty much, you know, he didn't know Laura was thinking this. But now that he got confirmation that Laura's involved, because he already knew Anna Felicia was, you know, trying to investigate him. So he was like, you know what? I got, he said, I got plans. He said, trust me, they, they ain't even about to see it coming. I'm like, what the hell are you up to, Vic? What you about to do? Please tell me you ain't about to, you know, try to do something with that little ice princess. Like you trying to get world damnation or something. <laughs> hey, what is he doing? 
It's getting interesting now. So anyway, that's pretty much the whole episode. Hit the comment section. Let me know what you all thought about it. And I'll see you all later. Have a great day. Peace.